She's an innovator, creator, businesswoman, teacher, mother, TEDx presenter, published fitness writer, TV host, brand ambassador, and influencer. This is Jana Webb, a lifelong athlete and now industry disruptor. Her mission is to share and teach her unique brand of fitness and health as founder of her multi-million dollar brand, Joga World. Having found her niche market in the realm of high performance and elite athletes, she's been able to capture the attention of global media. Welcome to Practice Mastery Podcast, Jana Webb. Hello, hello, hello. Very pleased to have you on the show. Now, obviously, you're an influencer, and that's how I came across you, and we connected in kind of a roundabout, funny way. But uh, um, so what is yoga? So yoga is a hybrid of what we understand about biomechanics and cadence of sport, hybrided with the science of yoga breathing and relaxation. So, you know, that's the most concise way I can say it. Um, but to simplify it, it's it is designed for bodies that need to be move, that move quickly and who biomechanically need to be tight to have power and speed. So we love yoga. We're not saying yoga is bad. We're just saying that this, there's a different thing that athletes need. And this is what yoga is created for. Right now, now tell, tell us how that kind of evolved both in your mind and creation. Cause you're a re- very creative person, right? Yeah, which I I didn't, you know, there was never an intention there. It was just a very organic process in that I was told to go to yoga to rehab an injury. I started to do it and I started to gain those mental and relaxation benefits, but the physical piece of it just never resonated with my body. Um, I was injured, I was tight, and but because I was an athlete and competitive, I kept trying and kept trying and forced myself into positions that I had no business being in. We've all been in those yoga classes where we're like, I should not be doing this. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I ended up injuring myself. And so it was through kind of that process of trialing and airing a bunch of different yoga practices where I became curious and I was like, why isn't there anything out there for bodies like mine or minds like mine? Right. So, so as an innovator, you just started to evolve that process. Now you're, you're also a certified uh, and very experienced yoga teacher right or coach as uh, in in the past now you you've evolved quite substantially since then but but tell us about what what um you know what your ideal clientele now you're you're working with like your favorite audience or clientele are, are like pro athletes teens and such right tell us about that yeah, so I mean, all these years later, and I don't want this to sound like it, it just happened overnight because it's been a 17 year pioneering movement. Right. right it's just really been in the last couple of years that we've garnered a lot of traction in pro sport, which has always been where my passion and my interest lies and where the program and who it was created for. Um, but in saying that, now that we've expanded our curriculum and we have global, you know, teachers in our global network. Um, this program um, helps everybody, right? It really just looks at the human body as as a whole body and how we can kinetically move people properly. So they're in safe practice and we're really just always, you know, and you'll appreciate this, finding this balance between strength and mobility in the joints. Right. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. So, so it's a combination. It's really a fusion of, of things. uh, But more particularly, I, I caught that it's more for people that have to move quick and be very agile, which is, which is a little more or, or a lot more of a niche market, correct? It is a niche market. Like everything that is designed is based on our understanding of how athletes move and how they train and where we live is recovery, right? So we're not strength and conditioning. We're not PT. We're not AT. We're not Cairo. We're not any of these things. We are recovery, whether it's active recovery or full regeneration, we focus on sleep meditation. Um, but again, in a science and a vocabulary that makes sense for our end user, which are athletes, right? And so that's been a, a big part of the work is taking this ancient practice that you know was designed in a time and space where it wasn't for bodies that were getting hit at high speeds or it wasn't for the Western culture. And so it's not assumable that everybody can understand this language. And so what I've spent my life's work doing is taking this amazing thing called yoga and not only translating the vocabulary so it makes sense for people, but also making it make sense for biomechanical requirements for sport. Right. And so, so uh, Jenna, are, are you like your lead instructor, your founder, your principal in now what I believe is a, is a multi-million dollar brand that's, that's building. How do you see that brand 
expanding. How do you, where do you want to see this go? Yeah, so we want to establish to be the governing body of yoga and sports. So that's kind of our core mission. And for, to do that, everything we say yes or no to, right, just, you know, answers that question. So is this going to get us closer or further away from that? And, and I will say it's really hard in the fitness space, right, because I've been pitched or have been invited to or have been, you know, opted to be purchased by companies who want to take this mainstream. And we're just not there yet, right? And so we're really trying to, you know, and back to like practice mastering, right? Like we really want to be this body of sport, our this body of yoga that any athlete could do and their strength and conditioning their head coach knows that they're safe and they're getting the results that are required based on what we've been told to do or what is needed in that situation right right and, and uh I, I believe it's it's under the guise and um guidance of certified people right absolutely yeah and you know this is where it gets exciting and i always say like yoga tomorrow will be the best version of yoga tomorrow because tomorrow we will have trained maybe a hundred bodies today and our coaches will have gotten that much more information about themselves as a coach and that as a program. And we now have physiotherapists, sports chiropractors, ATs, people who have way more, I would say like book education than I right. made. Right. And they bring a different lens to the program. And so what's amazing is we have all of these different people who are experts in their field coming into our curriculum and making it better. Right. We get more science, we get more bodies and we get more application. And that is that that true harness of like wanting to be the best right at what we do. Right. Can, can you give me a specific example, uh, not not by name or such, but think of a, of a client that you had a you know, breakthrough or maybe many clients or a team that had a breakthrough. Can you give me an example of that? Yeah, you know, it's actually just been recently and, and he actually just got traded. His name's Karis Levert and he plays for the Brooklyn Nets and he just got traded to Indiana. And it's been an interesting story in that just just how I got into that facility and got the opportunity to work with that team to then finding this one athlete who really took to the program then to see his transition and his, his ability to adapt the program and then to see his success on the court in the last two years has been really phenomenal. But, you know, from, from start to finish, there were so many moving pieces involved in that trajectory, right? From, you know, getting the interview to then, you know, proving myself to the head of performance that this program would fit into their ecosystem to then, you know, gaining the trust of the athlete to then getting consistency to then, you know, like there's so much that has to happen right. for and, that to happen, right? And, and it does sound like there's, there's there's, there's a couple of themes, right? Trust, credibility, and then results. Yeah, you have to have a good product. Like when you're competing or, you know, I look at my product as a competing product um, and you're, you're trying to implement this product with the best athletes in the world, you can't fake this. You can't. Like you are working, you are. I believe working, you. I believe you. Know, you are working with the best athletes in the world who get pitched so many different things, you know. And the people that are in those positions to help those athletes make choices have also, you know, mastered their own skills to, you know, hold their, themselves a position, you know, in pro sport. It is not easy to get one of those positions. If you think about how many pro sports teams there are and how many jobs there actually are, there's not many, right? Right. And so, and, and so many um, kids and young people aspire to. To those positions, what would you say to them about developing and getting into um, yoga or, or, you know, access to these programs? Is it, is it launched at that level yet? Yeah, I mean, it is in that we, we actually help our coaches get to this next level because one of our, you know, entry questions when people come through our curriculum is like, do you have a passion for sport? Because that is going to help me understand where to focus our energy and who to focus it on. And if the answer is yes, then I, what I try to do from a leader point of view is I try to not only open doors for those people, but also mentor them and, you know, give them all of the wisdom. And what I mean by wisdom is all of the mistakes that I've made. You know, if you're right, in, I'm going to be like, do not do this. Do not do this. Do not do this. Like that is not the pathway to success. And, you know, that with that comes a lot of value. Right. And that is why, you know, our mentorship program is very phenomenal. Um, our network is, you know, an amazing network of experts, you know, from all different backgrounds. And, and so with that, I say to younger people, first of all, you know, really be true about your passion. And second of all, 
kind of our thing is have the courage to go all in like and that's that's kind of the manifesto for working in sport and how sports organizations operate right they're like you're in or you're out right there's there's no real area to well it's a, it, it's i think it's a very black and white world and sometimes it's a it seems like a cruel world very talented people but they just don't have it they don't just cut it Right. Yeah. And, you know, you can be as skilled as you want to be, but there are other pieces of the equation that need to, you know, be um, thought about. And, and that is the ability to communicate and to sell yourself and, you know, to take risk and to jump on a plane and go and do a meeting, right? Like there are so many things that I've had to do to establish myself in this space. Um, and, and, and I guess the word that comes to me is sacrifice. And so mm. just hoping and looking on Instagram and thinking that one day you want to get somewhere, you, you have to be prepared to sacrifice something. Right. And in fact, in many ways, and that, that I, I hear it is, is some of your pursuit uh, to, to a degree of mastery that you're, you're working towards, correct? Yeah. And just to, um, it's almost, it's this, this fire inside of me that years ago, when I first went down this path, I was told that I would never be able to do this. I was told that wow. would never be mandated by pro sports, because at that time, my philosophy was like, hey, massage therapy just got integrated into pro sport. Like prior to that, it was just strength and conditioning. So I was like, there is no yoga modality in the space of pro sport. Why can't our program be mandated? And I was told no. So I got a little bit of you in me. <laughs> like I really yeah, I get it. I'm like, like, listen, like when I get told no, I'm like, okay. And I to myself, I actually say, watch this. And it it's my accountability measure, it's my accountability tool for myself. Right. I, I call that what well, most would call that disruptorship. I just made yeah. up a word. But but the, the you disruptor and you <laughs> said you know uh no means yes to a different person yes right yeah. so i am intrigued about how um you know you've been you're an influencer definitely on social media uh, i'm intrigued about how you developed that following was it was it just a, a slow and steady grind or did you know what, what was that many of our listeners would want to know how, how do i become more of an influencer in my mastery in my circles yeah so i think the first thing is to just stay in your lane like we can't be everything to everybody and so you know, and, and that comes back to me understanding how to create a brand and to articulate brand messaging. And so the first thing is, you know, to stay in your lane. Um, and the second thing just comes down to a, a foundation of authenticity. You know, I did a TED talk years ago about finding the me in social media. And it's so easy to be distracted by other people's thoughts and ideas that it's hard to harness your own sense of idea and, and, and messaging. And so I always say like for you to have true messaging, it authentically actually has to be yours, you know? And so like with the 45 that just, I just launched, that's mine. Like I came up with that from meditation from like, I, I piloted it with myself. I didn't find it on anyone else's Instagram. We didn't go looking for it. It came from me. And Absolutely. So the- and and tell, tell us a little bit more about that because I kind of inadvertently joined that, but I'm full in. Okay. Yeah. Jana? In. You're all in. No, so the I'm 45- all in. Yeah. So what happened was prior to my 45th birthday, I mean, this year, obviously through curveball, right at me and everybody else in the world, this was the year of Jan. I was doing all the things on my personal brand trajectory that I had been working towards for years, speaking to her book, like all, you know, all the things that I've worked so hard to get to, and it was all canceled. Oh, and, right. Yeah, and so I was like, okay, well, what else? And I knew it was my 45th birthday coming up in December. And I, well, I happy knew, belated birthday. Yeah, thank you. But, and this is what kind of inspired this idea of the 45. I was like, besides like, you know, people always say to me, oh, you're 45. You don't look, you know, all the things you don't look 45. You don't act 45. You you don't. Thank you. Perfect. And I'll take that all day, every day. Yeah. Um, But it did. It made me question for myself, like what else I do in my day to day. And there's so much more than what I present on social media that I actually like you know, I actually practice, you know, like you're practice, like the things I practice in my daily routine. And so I did this self-discovery session with myself and every day I just started to notice these little nuanced things that I did. And I would just jot them down and jot them down and jot them down from the point of even just smiling at somebody. And I was like, right, I just do that. So what if, what if I made that a conscious act and, and what Mm. if that conscious act became a message for other people. And so, so 45 is basically 45 subconscious 
right? Things that I've been doing in my life that I've now made into conscious actions. And this is the 45. Right. And, yeah. So and, and you're sharing it with, with others who voluntarily or, or just um, accidentally got in on it. Yeah, yeah, and this is really just a soft launch. Like we have a lot of other things coming up the pipeline. As you know, I always got a plan and a strategy. And oh, that's so brilliant. Now you speak from uh, very briefly the uh, uh, an ad firm you mentioned that you were involved or created an ad firm back in your history. Is that oh, correct? Back in the day, yeah. So I was going to go play college volleyball, and I opted to take the year off and went to go work. And I started working for an advertising company actually back in Calgary. Right commercial industries back in the day and so this job that i did would be like the modern day groupon without the without the advantage the advantage of digital marketing and so i basically would take these 90 percent off ticket items or promotions and go door to door business to business and sell 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 and i was like this is like this is the easiest thing i've ever done i need no <laughs> paid in cash and then i ended up moving myself up into a management position and then ended up taking over a franchise and moved to Ottawa at 19 years old, opened up my own business, closed all my own contracts, hired my own staff. And I say like that part of my life, um, you know, paid so much tribute to me now understanding marketing and doing what it takes and perseverance and, you know, that, that psychology behind sales, right? That, um, that persistence that it takes to, uh, you know, be told 90 no's and to open up the next door and be like, this might be a sale, right? Right. So understanding how to manage people that were like twice my age. I was 19 years old and I was interviewing people that were like 45, right? And I had this big coffee pop that said the boss and I thought like that merited me. In my oh my life. goodness. There's that, there's that number again, 45. Yeah, right? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Jana, I want to ask you about what your, say your top three core values and how it relates to your, your business now and where you see that going. In, in other words, how have you maintained that? You're very genuine. Uh, I love the fact that authentic, genuine, those are the principles and the mastery that you said have, have partly gotten you this far. Where, what, are your, what are your three top core values? You know, and, and to be honest, like, I feel like these words, they never really shift and they evolve. And this, this year, you know, our my three core values, especially like for the business, then there, I have Jana Webb core values, which are respect, trust, and honesty. And then I have the yoga, you know, core values, which is accountability, believe, and focus. And so between my own personal core values and the business core values, it's, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of integrity to uphold. Right. I, I like the fact that you, you have six core values, which really I see are your core values. Just, just they're distributed a little bit different between your personal brand, um, uh, Joga Jana and, and Joga World. Did I, did I catch that right? Yeah, perfectly. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So um, tell me about like that, it sounds like the that accident turned your life around in a crazy way. I'm sure it was terrible. Um, not the details about that, but I, I want to hear: did it did it change your life, or or what has it done for you? The blessing in disguise. Yeah, one thousand percent. And you know, every year I answer this question that blessing changes. So I remember doing a keynote um, a year after it happened, and I was just happy to like be walking, and you know, all of the things that come with coming, you know, recovering partially from that type of injury. And I did a keynote in front of five thousand people. I opened for uh, CanFit Pro, and I remember standing on that stage. And at that time, the blessing was the opportunity just for me to be there, you know, just actually physically and mentally be in that space to not only tell my story but to really drive home the message of accountability. You know, I said to those 5,000 people, I was like, if I was not strong, so if I had not been doing all of my own practices of yoga and strength training, you know, up until that car accident, first of all, I would not be alive, probably not walking. And so mm. I said, those 5,000 fitness professionals, each and every one of you, if you're sitting in this chair and you're watching this and you're in this industry, you have an accountability because the, like your voice and what you do every day matters. And so with that, leaving it on them to, you know, value what they do more and understand um, how important it is and how what they do could save somebody's life, right? It really could in terms of like preparing somebody for 
the worst, right? And so the lesson for that has just been about staying strong and being strong. Um, the second lesson that I've learned, and I'm, I'm still coming on the other side of it, is just a huge amount of empathy for people who combat mental illness and well-being because mm. of what I have been through um, from the concussion lens. And everything that you hear about concussion, the symptoms, they're all very true. And I've experienced every single one of them. It is scary when you're confused and you're angry and you're aggressive and you don't remember where you are. Like these are all very real things that have happened to me. And now that I'm coming on the other side of it, I'm still at rehab four days a week. Um, I can, I'm hoping that all of the things that I've learned in my con concussion rehab will be like the next piece of the chapter of yoga. It just has to be you know, and I haven't got there yet. And I'm not at liberty to say I've created this program to help people with mental well-being um, in its entirety. But I definitely know that it's it's my calling and it's the universe saying, hello. Right. Well, that's that sent some shivers up my spine. Yeah. Wow. Because that that is truly inspired. So where do you see, where do you want this, this brand new year, if you will, uh, in the next few years to come? I want to to know from you, Jana Webb, what do you see your living legacy to, to be uh, yeah. in, in your, whether it be separated, your personal brand or, or, or yoga, yoga world or both? I mean, they're all one. I, I take the holistic view in, in personal life and in business. What do you see as your living legacy? Yeah, the words that come to mind are impact, you know, I want to, I want to have impact on a lot of people's lives. And the second word that comes to mind is inspiration. Like mm. I feel, you know, it's, I have a, I have a story to tell and I, I was gifted this story through a lot of, um, you know, really tough situations and I've been through a lot of adversity. And so with that, I feel like it's my due diligence to not only tell my story, but with that story, ignite somebody else's story and share their stories. Like I feel I want people to be able to have a platform to tell their story because I, I merit and have empathy and, and respect, right? Other people's stories. And so that is kind of my global lens of what I wanna do. Um, we're figuring out how to do that this year. We're actually just creating that, you know, that business and us, that, that business plan around that right now. Um, but even with yoga, you know, how we impact athletes and that trickle down effect, right? Like, and how I impact the coaches and how I impact everybody that I can on my social media, like every touch point that I possibly have, you know, I fuel it with those underlying intentions of impact, inspiration. Impact and inspiration. Uh, certainly this, this interview, this chat with you has been uh, inspiring to me and, and I'm sure for our listeners as well. Um, final question is that where do, you, where do you want to have more collaborations? If it's your wish list this year, where do you want to collaborate more with either professionals or otherwise? Yeah, the collaboration part is actually on our 2001 trajectory as, as a huge priority. Um, and, and I've done this, you know, in the past, but without thought, if that makes sense, it's all just happened very organic. Like this year, though, it's very thoughtful and strategic. And we want to align and collaborate with brands that have our same core philosophy, right? Which is, you know, helping others and having, you know, um, this idea that like at the end of the day, my main passion is athlete well-being and we want to be the governing body of yoga and sport and so we want to align with people and brands and, and anybody who supports those same core values yeah. oh that's that's beautiful and and knowing you you've already got plans and you've got things rolling so oh yeah don't sit still for very long alan i'm a <laughs> You know. <laughs> any any final words about uh, to our listeners uh, about about uh, encouraging them to be more um, intentional, if you will. That's what I got out of this chat today. Um, more masterful, I suppose. Mm -hmm. I think the first thing that comes to mind is to really um, value and reflect on all of your experiences because 
they're all little nuggets of information that you can harness into something else, right? And so, you know, nothing that we've done in our past is without, um, it, it, it goes, you know, it goes without, or sorry, what am I trying to say? It teaches us something and it helps lend us to the next experience. And so I think really value your, the, all those little past things that you did, maybe have some thought about what each of those things taught you, and then maybe apply those to, you know, what it is that you want to do moving forward with the, with the understanding that that might go off the rails too. And it's okay. Right. Like I think, you know, we have to have intention, but we also have to listen and be aware. Right. So there's this idea of having blindfolders on, which is great. And they get you from point A to point B and we need those sometimes and some pieces of our business in our life. We're like, Hey, I'm doing this and I'm not looking at like, like right now the door's closed. I'm 45 minutes. I'm here. Right. Right. <laughs> Times where you have to be open and listen and say yes to things that scare you and all of these things. So I don't know how what I said there, but basically I think I said reflect on the past and acknowledge your past and move forward with intention, but also with the lens that there are there's another way. There's always another way. Right. Especially when those doors are mostly closed, right? As your story is about how you got to uh, uh, into working with teams and, and professional teams, which, and many people told you, no, that's not going to happen. You'll never get there. Okay. And so Jenna Webb, um, tremendous story, personal story. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Um, uh, shed some more light, uh, on mastery and, and encouraging, uh, listeners to be more mindful and insightful. Um, and to pay attention and, and not just to take no as, as one answer. So, uh, Jana, I appreciate you so much and, and I wish you the best this coming year and, and beyond creating your living, living legacy for many, many other people as you continue to influence and positively um, uh, help people and inspire people. Uh, thank you very much for being on the show today. And as listeners, uh, you'll, you can find out more about Jana on our show notes and uh, join us on our official Facebook page, Practice Mastery official Facebook page. And for now, before I say goodbye, I hope this uh, chat with Jana Webb has brought you one step closer to Practice Mastery. Bye for now. I'm Dr. your host, Dr. Alan Chong.